Today, we're going to be going over all the best survivor builds in Dead by Daylight. Yes, I do mean all the best ones, and I have got 20, guys, 20 different survivor builds. Yes, you heard me right, 20 different survivor builds, guys. I have got a build for you guys for basically every scenario, every situation, every play style. You want a meta build? I got you. You want a solo queue build? I got you. You want a meme build? I got you. You want a unique build you would have never thought of in 100 million years? I got you. You want a silly build to do daily rituals and loot some chests and munch some totems? I even got builds for those guys. There is going to be a build for every playstyle and every situation and every kind of player in this video. So go ahead and smash that like button already because this video is going to be great. Grab some popcorn and let's dive into it. This will be my final parting gift to you guys before I set off on my adventure to Thailand and Southeast Asia. If you don't know, I'm gonna go backpack the world for a little bit. So if you wanna follow me on that journey, please check out my second YouTube channel, Sammy Stark. The link is in the description below. But without further ado, let's hop into the builds. Are you a beginner in Dead by Daylight? Did you just pick up this game and click on the first top builds video you saw on YouTube? Are you trying to figure out this game? Do you not have a lot of perks unlocked yet? Well guys, build number 20, the newbie is the build for you to try out. This build is great because literally all the perks in the build are free to everybody. Meg Thomas is a free character for everybody guys. Literally you can get her, she's free. You level her up a little bit. Her two base cake perks are Sprint Burst and Adrenaline which we'll be using in this build. Sprint Burst, it's a great exhaustion perk. It'll make you run really fast for three seconds, and then you're exhausted for 40 seconds until you can use the perk again. Now, if you're a newbie, you're gonna have trouble balancing your Sprint Burst, so I would recommend don't walk when you're using this perk. Um, just use it. Use it every time it's off cooldown, and you'll find yourself getting value out of it, and when you get better at the game, you can manage your exhaustion perk a little bit better. So Sprint Burst, a great tier one exhaustion perk all over the board right now, and it's free to you guys, so please use these newbies. Uh, Adrenaline, also an amazing perk that you don't have to do anything to get value out of. This perk will instantly activate as soon as the last generator pops. It will heal you for one full health state, causing you to also sprint 150% faster for 5 seconds. So you heal a full health state and you get a burst of speed. This perk is clutch and you literally don't have to do anything but finish the gens and then it will activate. So if you're injured, you'll go to full health. If you're on the ground, you'll stand up. This perk has so many potentials for very clutch moments and so many matches. Like It's just a solid perk to throw into honestly almost any loadout you'll usually get value out of it as long as you guys get the gens done now these next two perks are not meg thomas's perks so these next two are actually going to be found in the blood web so i'm going to talk about this for the newbies when you go to the blood web here you're going to click here you're going to level up you level up you know you click on your things click on your thing you see perks apply in the blood web if you just get enough blood points and level up enough you will get deja vu and you will get kindred and these perks are game changers for beginner players because deja vu will reveal the three generators that are in closest proximity to you permanently. So you can see where the gens are at. You don't have to waste time looking for them. When you do those gens, you'll do them 6% quicker, which means you get a bonus to your gen repair speed. But also, the best part of Deja Vu is that if you're always prioritizing doing the Deja Vu generators, which are the three closest together, then at the end of the game, the last three gens will be very far spaced apart because if you're always doing the gens that are closest together, then the last three gens will be far apart and that's gonna be harder for the killer to defend. If I'm gonna explain this for the newbies, there's a thing called three genning. So if the last three generators are really close together, there's a lot of games that you would have otherwise won, but you end up losing because the killer can defend those three generators easily. So you wanna make sure the last three generators are well spaced apart. And this takes the guesswork out of it. I cannot recommend this enough for new players, deja vu will single-handedly make the difference between you winning and losing a ton of games. And then the last perk, similar thing, Kindred. Very, very good intelligence perk. Whenever you are on the hook, all survivors' auras will be revealed to all other survivors. And the killer's aura will be revealed to your teammates if he's within 60 meters of the hook. This lets the other players on your team see what's going on so they know who needs to go for the rescue. If the killer's camping the hook, they'll see that too. But also, if another survivor is on the hook, then this perk will activate just for you, and then you will still see where all the other survivors are at, and you will still see the killer's aura if he's next to the hook. So then you know if you need to be the one to go in for the rescue, you will know if it's safe to go in for the rescue, because a lot of times starting out, you don't really know when it's safe, what the killers do, you have no idea what's going on, period. 
Kindred takes the guesswork out of that, and honestly, it's a really, really good intelligence perk. Like, even for veteran players, this perk still gets value for you. But for newbies, it is a must. So Kindred's a must, Deja Vu's a must, Sprint Burst, Adrenaline, and feel free to bring an item, guys. Bring just a basic camping aid kit so you can heal yourself once in a trial. And this is the newbie build, and this will get you well on your way to enjoying the fog. Let's go into build number 19. Do you play a lot of solo queue and do you want the highest chances of carrying your team to victory so you can get another win? Well guys, the solo queue carry build is for you. This build includes an exhaustion perk. We're using life for this build, but feel free to use sprint burst, dead hard, whichever exhaustion perk you like the most, that's acceptable to use. Life, whenever you vault a platform of any kind, you will run 150% quicker for three seconds. So very similar to Sprint Burst. This will cause you to be exhausted for 40 seconds. Very good at getting out of a tight situation. But the rest of these perks are going to be what really makes this build shine. So Lyth is there to help you and chase. Prove thyself. Got a little bit of a nerf recently, but it's still a really good perk. Whenever you're doing gens with other players, you will all get a 10% repair speed boost to doing those generators and honestly guys somebody did the math and i think between 15 percent and 10 percent it's really it's like comes out to like two or three seconds it's not even a lot of time um from the nerf so you're still doing the gens at an expedited rate so prove thyself will help you guys get those gens done quicker if you want you could use deja vu in the slot as well i'm trying to do a little variety with these builds but prove thyself very good perk for getting gens done with randos okay bring prove thyself You'll thank me later. So we got a perk for Chase. We got a perk for Jens. We've got a perk for healing. That's right, healing. We'll make it is absolutely sick. This is going to let you single-handedly be able to reset your teammates in 8 seconds. Normally when you heal up another player, it takes 16 seconds. When you unhook somebody, you will get a 100% boost to your healing speed for 90 seconds, which is a long time. Usually you'll be able to heal 1, 2, maybe even 3 people in that 1 minute and a half time frame. But this will let you heal them in 8 seconds, so that way you're not wasting 16 seconds per heal. And then you can also be very proactive. You've got a perk for Chase. You've got your flashlight with you. You've got Prove Thyself to do these gens quicker. You've got We'll Make It to reset your team quicker. This is just designed to give you the best possible odds of winning games in solo queue. And then the last perk, again, we're using Kindred. I just explained it in the newbie build. I'm not going to explain it again. But this perk is just vital for uncoordinated teams. So very good in solo queue, very good for beginner players. This just gives a lot of intel and oral reading to teammates so that way they can play a little better. Now in solo queue, your teammates aren't always going to be good, but at least with Kindred, it definitely helps a lot. So this is the build, guys, that I like to use in solo queue. And I usually have a pretty good time keeping my team healthy and navigating what's going on and seeing what my teammates are doing but yeah kindred and using proof this is just a great build for solo queue guys so if you want to just carry in your solo queue games bring something like this bring a flashlight or bring a med kit with two heals so you can heal yourself twice and that would be my pick for a solo queue build well, let's hop into build number 18 do you guys want to just troll around and have a good time you guys hate bleeding do you guys hate legion and the plague do you want to run three percent quicker are you 9% better than everybody else because your ego just tells you so? Well guys, the Giga Chad No Mither build is for you! If you're a fan of the channel, you've probably seen this build more than one, two, three, four times. But this is the Giga Chad No Mither build, guys. No Mither, a bit of a meme perk to many, but not to DBD builds. No Mither is fun. It's a great time. This will make you broken for the whole duration of the trial, so you are always going to be one hit from going down. This build is not for the faint of heart, but the payoff is you will not leave any pools of blood, so that's one less thing the killer can track you by. Your grunts of pains are reduced by 75% all the time, so you make very little noise, and your recovery speed is increased by 25% from the dying state, and you can recover infinitely from the dying state. So the killer can basically never leave you slugged because you can just keep continually getting up with no mither. But the trade-off is you're always one hit until you go down. But we have perks to help mitigate that. So since we're going to be injured the whole time, we're actually bringing tenacity with us. So tenacity is here for those moments where we do get slugged. Tenacity will actually decrease our grunts of pains by another 75%. So basically... Because we have our Grunts of Pains reduced and then emit Tenacity reduces it more, you're basically going to be dead silent, guys. You're not going to be making any noise on the ground. So if the killer looks away for a split second, you can recover with Tenacity. It lets you recover 
and crawl 50% faster at the same time. So you can crawl away while you're recovering. This perk, because I've breathed tenacity, I have gotten way more no mither recoveries than I should be allowed to have because they just kind of don't expect it. They'll slug me, they're gonna go run, chase another survivor who's close by for a second, and then they come back, and, and I'm, I'm long gone, and I'm not making any noise, and I'm not leaving any blood, so they have no way to track me. So this makes really slippery. And you could do cheeky little things like if one of your teammates is getting carried to the hook, you can go just body block, sacrifice yourself, take it, go down, and then just crawl away. And usually, depending on the map and where you're at, you can probably find some cover and get away and then just rebound and be safe and basically slow down the killer. And then the two perks that make this build, guys, Resilience and made for this, a meta, meta combo, but these perks are great. Resilience makes you 9% better than everybody else. When you're injured, you will do vaulting 9% quicker, repairing, sabotaging, healing, unhooking, vaulting, cleansing, exit gates. Every action in the game, you do 9% quicker. So that's the trade-off. We're always one hit from going down, but we will do everything 9% quicker, including gen. So you're working a lot quicker the whole time. You're vaulting a lot quicker in chase. Made for this. You'll be permanently running 3% quicker, as long as you're not exhausted for any weird reason. But since you're injured, made for this activates only when you're injured, you run 3% quicker. And also, if you finish healing another survivor, you'll get endurance for 10 seconds. So there's actually some times where you're rocking the no mither and you finish healing somebody when the killer comes, and then you can just go run into the killer's face and take a hit. It, it's always funny and hilarious when I pull that off. But that gives you a little bit of a backbone for this build. So if you haven't already tried it, guys, the Giga Chad no mither build, I recommend just bringing a flashlight with you because, I mean, you could bring a toolbox too, but the flashlight probably your best choice, and uh, a med kit would kind of just be pointless. Don't don't even bring the med kit. Actually, you could bring a med kit to heal your teammates, and that way you can get your maid for this quicker. Have fun with it, guys. The Giga Chad no Mither build. Let's hop into build number 17. Are you a stealthy player? Do you like doing things behind the scenes? Do you like staying off the grid? Are you trying to avoid? direct interactions with the killer are you trying to be slippery the enigma secret agent survivor you just want to get in you want to be behind the scenes you want to do your gens you want to get out call it a day guys the sneaky pete build is for you a bit of a stealth build for the stealthier survivors out there the build guys sprint burst is our exhaustion perk lets us run quicker for three seconds we discussed this already but the rest of this is where the rest of the build gets interesting. So we're using Lightfooted, brand new perk with Ellen Ripley. This perk is really cool, guys. So whenever you run, you make you make footsteps in this game. And if you run with Ada, you make very loud footsteps in this game. With Lightfooted, your footsteps are silent until you perform a rushed action. So if you like take a fast vault or something, this perk goes on cooldown for 20 seconds. But until that moment happens, you don't make any sound when you're running and this actually trips killers up i've noticed like there are times where i'm like looping killers and they get so thrown off by this perk because they don't hear the footsteps and like where i'm running to this also opens up the door for some cheeky flashlight saves because you can literally do one of two things since you're bringing sprint burst with you you can kind of be hiding and then the killer comes you can sprint burst away they won't hear your footsteps and then before they even know it you're you're long gone guys you're, you're literally long gone or you could be lingering around and you could run up to get a flashlight save. So bring a flashlight with you and they won't even hear you coming because you're not making any footsteps. This perk is really cool, but it gets better because we're bringing lightweight. Lightweight, guys, reduces the scratch marks that we leave by a duration of five seconds. So if you don't know, whenever you run, you leave scratch marks that the killer can see and track you with. Those hang out for probably a good 10 seconds. It's a long time, guys. And if you've never played with the perk fixated, let me show it to you right here. Nope, nope, nope. Fixated. Oh, what's it called? It's not fixated anymore. It's the Nancy perk, the one where you walk 20% quicker and you see your scratch marks. This one, self-aware. So this one lets you see your scratch marks. And this is a great perk to bring with lightweight because you can see what lightweight does for you. Because not only does it make your scratch marks disappear five seconds quicker, so your scratch marks don't stay there very long, so it makes you a lot harder to track and you can run and feel more comfortable running without leaving traces to where you might be. But also it makes the spacing of your scratch marks inconsistent. So sometimes they'll shoot off to the right, they'll shoot off to the left, sometimes there'll be a big space in between them. This can make it tricky for the killers to track you. And why I like bringing self-aware with it is because if the scratch marks, like you say you're running into a building and the scratch marks like go left, 
uh, to make it think you went to the left side of the building or something, then you could just like stop running and then just walk to, like the right because the scratch marks are making it look like you went left and then the killer will go and they'll go left, assuming they don't have line of sight on you. But there's a lot of little cheeky plays you could do with self-aware. But the last perk I'm bringing is actually distortion. You start with three tokens and every time the killer has a aura revealing perk active, you will, well, block the aura reading so they can't see where you're at but then also, you will not leave any scratch marks for 10 seconds. So for 10 seconds, your aura will be revealed to the killer and you won't leave any scratch marks, period. So you technically don't even really need lightweight when distortion goes off because then you're just not leaving any scratch marks, period. And then, not only that, but you get your tokens back every 30 seconds you are spent hiding within the killer's terror radius, which shouldn't be too hard because you're not really making a lot of noise anyways. So guys, this is the Sneaky Peep build. So I will say two things. I really like self-aware in this build with lightweight so you've got a couple options if you don't really want sprint burst and you don't need an exhaustion perk i would just bring self-aware because it's going to work beautifully with lightweight um or if you just don't want distortion you don't care if your aura is getting re red because sometimes you know i have the curse whenever i equip this perk i play against a killer that's not even using any aura reading perks but whenever i don't use it i'm playing against aura reading perks it's just, that's just how it goes. Or you can swap out self-aware for distortion or sprint burst. Um, but these two I would for sure keep because they're they're pretty they're pretty fun perks, guys. Lightweight is very underrated, but it's actually a pretty good time and it makes you feel secure and safe and the latter. So guys, try out the sneaky Pete build for yourselves. Well, let's hop into build number 16. Are you an altruistic player? Are you the captain of your team? Are you just here? to carry your team to victory and to support your team in all degree of endeavors and dead by daylight. Well guys, you want the team captain build guys. It all starts with leader. Very good perk that not a lot of people use, but it's great. So this actually doesn't work for you. It works for your teammates, but it also kind of works for you. And I'll explain that here in a second. So this will actually increase the speed that other survivors around you will do unhooking cleansing exit gates healing chest speeds you name it they do everything 25 percent quicker when they're around you within eight meters but also this effect will linger for 15 seconds after they leave your eight meter range so this perk is great because it lets your teammates do things really quickly and honestly one thing people don't think about with leader is that it actually because it makes your teammates heal 25 percent quicker Every time your teammates heal you, you're getting healed quicker. So that's the cool thing about leaders that your teammates heal you quicker, they do things quicker, and then if you have other teammates and you guys are in a huddle and you're doing group healing, you will heal really quickly with leader. So leader, great perk. Also great for getting yourself healed up. Bond, just a simple perk. Reveals the aura of all survivors within 36 meters of you. This makes using leader very easy to do. Also makes it easy to find a teammate to heal you, to find a teammate who needs healing, to see who's in chase, to get in position for a flashlight save. I would definitely bring a flashlight with this build. Bond, great intelligence perk. Um, just, just a solid perk, solid perk all around. Bond in any build would be a good day. Botany, guys. We will heal people 50% quicker all the time because we are the team captain. Healing item efficiency is reduced by 20%, but that doesn't matter because we're not bringing a med kit with this build. So like I said, guys, this build is all about keeping your team safe. We have a flashlight for aggro. We can go for flashlight saves. We have bond to see where our teammates at. Bot need to go heal our teammates. Leader so our teammates heal us better. So our teammates heal other people better. So they open the exit gates quicker. So they sabotage the hooks quicker. And then the last perk is prove thyself because this is a build for your team. So whenever you're working on a gen with your teammates, you are doing it 10% quicker. All in all, solid build, my friends. I love using this one in solo queue as well. Just a very good build when you're just there to be altruistic and just want to take care of your team. This is not a bad way to go about it. And let's hop in to build number 15. All right, guys. Are you are you here because you just want to you just want to run from the killer? You want to loop the killer? You want to run around in circles? You want to run around in circles? You want to fast vault? You want to fast vault? You want to drop a pallet? You want to fast vault? And that's all you want to do. You don't want to touch the gens. You don't want to do anything else. You just want to be in chase and you want to run from that killer as long as you can. Well, guys, we have the best looping build for you. It all starts with windows of opportunity. Great perk for beginners, great perk for advanced players and intermediate players. This basically just guarantees that you'll never get stuck in a dead zone while you're in chase. 
lets you see all the vault locations and pallets within a 32 meter range of you. And that is actually really cool. Act, did they just change this perk? I just noticed they, bro, whoa, 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 hold on. I'm finding this out as I'm recording this video. Apparently, Windows Opportunity has a cooldown of 20 seconds after you vault a dropped pallet. Wow, that's kind of crazy. So actually, this perk got a little bit of a nerf. It should still be good though, guys. It's gonna at least get you to safety for the first time around, but I'm literally just seeing that. What? When did they nerf Windows? That's kind of wild. Anyways, <laughs> let's carry on. But guys, Windows Opportunity will let you see all vault locations within 32 meters of you. So this will help you out tremendously in Chase because you can just keep finding the safe place to loop to. Um, you actually can't chain loops anymore because after you do a vault, this will go on cooldown for 20 seconds. But if you pay attention to where everything's at, it probably shouldn't even matter too much, guys. I need to actually test this out. This is kind of crazy. But we're gonna still keep windows of opportunity in this build for now because it will at least get you to safety for your first vault, and that's all that matters. We're bringing resilience for that 9% extra speed when we're injured. But the main thing is we want the vaulting speed because we're gonna be trying to loop the killer as long as possible. So we want resilience so that way we can take these vaults as quick as possible because we're also using made for this the combo i told you the dream combo resilience made for this you don't usually see one perk without the other so with this build guys we can find pallets easily with windows opportunity we can use resilience we can use made for this to loop the killer and try to stall a lot of time for our teammates to get gens done and work on the objectives and then the last perk for this build, guys. So this is the setup the setup for looping. Made for this, Resilience, Windows, got a little bit of a nerf, but this still feels like the perk to use. Hope. So you have some options here, actually, for the last perk slot. I enjoy Hope with this build, because in the end game, once the last gen pops, you get a 7% haste status effect, which increases your movement speed. And because you have made for this, you have a 3% boost to your movement speed. So in the end game, you're running 10% quicker. So you will you will be able to loot killers for quite a bit of time with hope and made for this. In the end game, you're gonna be basically untouchable. Solid choice. But if you don't want to use hope and you want to use something a little more consistent, you're more than welcome to use an exhaustion perk. I would say life or dead hard. Um, probably dead hard would be my first choice because dead hard, you can use it at the last possible second when you're about to actually go down to extend the chase a little bit longer than pop your dead hard. Because remember, made for this does not work when you're exhausted. You can also use life too, but you just gotta be really smart about when you decide to take your vault and use life for that burst of speed. But I would say hope, dead hard, second choice, maybe life for the third choice. But this is the looping build, guys. Obviously, you wanna bring a flashlight, make sure you blind in the killer every time they break the pallets that you drop, because you will be dropping a lot of pallets. And let us hop in to build number 14. But before I do that, guys, are you enjoying this top 20 DVD Survivor Bills episode? I know you are. So smash the like button. Please comment down below and let me know what your favorite build ends up being. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already part of the family because you made it this far. And I know there's a lot of you guys out there who aren't subscribing. You're just watching the video. Guys, subscribe. I love you. Let's hop into the next build. You like wood? Do you like lumber? Are you a fan of dropping them pallets and then picking them back up again for that 500 juicy BP? Well, you want the, the silly little pallet build, guys. This is the pallet build. Yes, there's actually a build of Dead by Daylight based around pallets, thanks to Troubleshooter. So this perk, guys, activates when you're in chase and it will last for 10 seconds after the chase ends before it deactivates, okay? So when you're in chase, troubleshooter activates. What this does is you'll see the ore of the generator with the most progress. So you know whenever you're running from the killer to not run to the gen that's about to pop. But also whenever you drop a pallet, you will see the killer's aura for six seconds. So guys, whenever you're looping and you drop the pallet, you will see the killer's aura for six seconds, which means you can, there's a lot of situations where there's like mind games in play and like you're behind cover, you're breaking line of sight. This takes the guesswork out of it. You can mind game the killer to your advantage with this perk because you get vision of the killer when you're in chase. The aura reading is really great. So now they'll either run around the pallet or they'll break the pallet. And if they break the pallet, we actually have alert. I'm going out of order. Alert, again, when the killer does a break action, breaks a pallet, breaks a door, you see their aura for five seconds. So this is a fun little build because whenever you're in chase, you drop the pallet, you're seeing the killer's aura, 
If they want to mind game you and run around, it doesn't matter. You see in their aura, if they decide to break the pallet, you're still seeing their aura for five more seconds while you make your way to safety. We also have any means necessary. Now, why am I bringing this? So this lets you see the aura of all the dropped pallets in the map. And then you can run up to them and you can pick them up. It takes four seconds to pick them up, but you can reset pallet. So if the killer ever doesn't break a pallet, then you can pick the pallet up to use it again later. But here's a funny little thing you could actually do. Let's say you see the killer for a brief second, you get the chase music, and then the killer actually goes to like chase somewhere else and run somewhere else. Remember, this lasts for 10 seconds after chase. So that's quite a bit of time. So a lot of times, just for fun, guys, I will like run and I'll be in like safety and I'm not sure where the killer's at. I'll just drop the pallet and then pick it up again with any means necessary. So that way I get the aura reading effect of troubleshooter. So I'll drop the pallet and I'll see where the killer's at for six seconds. So then I know what my next play is. Kind of a weird, unorthodox way of getting intelligence, but it's it's a lot of fun when you do it. And then the last perk, guys, is life. Because if you do manage to get a pallet stun on the killer, well, then you can just vault that pallet you dropped and run the opposite direction. And most likely the killer will actually turn around and chase you and they won't break the pallet, which means you can come back later and pick it up. Um, guys, the pallet build. If you really want to, you could probably sub out like alert for windows of opportunity. But I'm going to say alert. Use alert instead because I, I don't know. I'm kind of grumpy. Like windows is going to let you find where all the pallets are at. <laughs> which will be easier to use troubleshooter and any means necessary. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. If you want to use Windows instead of Alert, feel free to use Windows instead of Alert. Um, I'm just a little salty that they nerfed it. I mean, I didn't even use Windows a lot anyways, but let's move on, guys, to build number 13. Yo, are you just here for a battle? Are you just here to fight? Are you trying to be that player who brings all the gear into the trial with them to combat the killer? Well, guys, you want the Trapper build. This build is actually really funny, guys. Um, chemical Trap, Blast Mine, Wiretap, and Flashbang. The incredible thing about this is that all of these perks activate after you do 50% of a generator. Now, what do these do for you? Chemical Trap, Ellen Ripley's new perk. After you finish 50% of a generator, you can put a trap on dropped pallets. They will stay there for 120 seconds, so two whole minutes. And if the killer breaks that pallet, they will be slowed for 50% for four seconds. Really funny when it goes off and will also slow the killer quite a bit when you're in chase. And then survivors will also see the aura of the trap pallets in yellow as well. So chemical trap guys, really cool. You can trap your pallets. Also, 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 blast mine. When you do 50% of a gen, you can then put a blast mine on a generator. If the killer kicks that generator, they will be stunned and blinded. I believe it's like three to four seconds, but this is super hilarious when it goes off, guys. So not only can you trap pallets to annoy the killer, you're also trapping the generators to annoy the killer. But not only that, guys, and honestly, with chemical trap, guys, if you're like in chase and you actually pallet stun the killer, you can just put that trap right on there and then they're just like, they're just going to look at you. They'll either break it or they'll run around. And uh, yeah, it's just funny. Chemical tracks actually really cool. I love this perk. Um, but then wiretap, guys. So I was going to say, Blast Mine is super hilarious to see when the killer kicks your gen and it blows up. And that's where Wiretap comes in. Because not only we're not only using it just to enjoy the show, but we're using it for intelligence too. So whenever we do 50% of a generator, same thing. We can put a Wiretap on the gen. This will let us see the killer's aura within 14 meters of the generator, which will make looping around generator pretty easy for us. But also, this will show us the aura of the killer when they come up to kick the gen. And guys, I, I've seen it like 10 times or 20 times or 100 times. It's it's hilarious. Like every time I see a killer go up to a wiretap blast mine gen and kick it, you just laugh. You just laugh. Is it the most impactful thing? It's a four second stun in a blind. Maybe not. They have to kick the gen twice to get rid of your wiretap. But still, it's it's incredible when it happens. And I have a lot of fun using this build. So wiretap guys for the vision, for the show. And then the last part is actually flashbang. So after you do 50% of a gen, you can go into a locker and then you can make a flashbang. Now you can use these to try to get a flashbang save when your killer's about to pick up your teammate. If you time it right, you can actually get a save. So then they drop your teammate. You can go up and drop this right under the hook before they hook your teammate to try to get a flashbang save. If you're enough ahead of a killer and chase, and you turn a corner, you can drop it. So when they turn the corner, they get blinded. But another cool thing you can do is actually if they're about to break your pallet that you drop, 
you can just drop the flashbang right when they're about to break the pallet so that way they get blinded when they break the pallet also if they have the chemical trap it's just funny guys you can chemical trap them they're breaking the pallet then you throw your flashbang to blind them if they go up and get blast mined then you can go up if you're hiding close by you can run up to them and then drop your flashbang on top of that just have fun with this build guys this is just a great build for us and the killer and the best part about it is that we're bringing the commodious toolbox the one with 32 charges that increases your repair speed by 50 percent and why are we using this toolbox is because commodious toolbox with 12 extra charges in the wire spool and the socket swivels for 30 percent extra speed is actually just enough so where you can run up to jen at the start of the game dump your toolbox in it and this setup right here will basically by the time you finish your toolbox you will get all these perks unlocked so that way you don't have to waste any time getting access to your perks you just go dump your toolbox into a gen right away and then you're good and then after that to get your perks back later you got to do the gens the slow old-fashioned way but at least this way you can get all four of your perks active and now see it's really cool when you just see four perks just activate it feels good it's a vibe guys try it the trapper build let's hop into build number 12. are you an og do you just like setting up safe havens for your teams do you like being the support player but not actually having to support your team because you just want to go and set up a little a little a little shop a little safe haven guys we've got the boon build the boon build hasn't really changed but the boon perks have changed so for the boon build guys we're bringing boon circle of healing you got to go up to totem bless the totem when you bless the totem that will totem will become a boon and if you have multiple boon perks don't worry all of those perks will go to that same totem you don't have to bless three different totems so whenever you bless the totem they will have circle of healing so you will see the aura of injured teammates within the boon radius, which is 24 meters. Not bad at all. It's actually quite a bit of space. But whenever you go to heal a teammate in the boon, you heal other teammates 100% quicker. So you can heal people in the boon eight seconds. So basically, it's like we'll make it. So the healing speed for the boon is good. Now, you cannot, no, you can no longer self heal yourself in the boon which is kind of unfortunate, so you always have to rely on a teammate, but at least the aura shows up, so usually if your team's reasonably competent, they will come up and heal you, or you can run into the boon and heal them. Boon Shadow Step. Really great perk, underrated, not enough people use it, but this perk's incredible. Also, 24 meters. All survivors in the boon's range will have their scratch marks and aura hit into the killer, so this makes this place a very safe place for you to run and heal, because you're not leaving scratch marks. If the killer has any aura reading perks, <laughs> ah, excuse me, they will not be able to see you in the shadow step so this is just one extra layer of comfort and also if you're looping the killer and you run to the boon um you could probably lose the killer pretty easily because then you stop showing your scratch marks uh, and that's going to really trip up the killer and chase when you're not dreaming any scratch marks and this effect also lingers four seconds after you leave the boon's radius so shadow step very great for making a safe place on the map very great for looping the killer assuming they don't snuff out your boon and then boon exponential oh my god this will increase your dying the dying recovery speed by 100 percent for all survivors who go down within the boon radius so if this killer slugs people within the boon radius and hasn't actually snuffed out the boon you can get up really quickly guys i think it's what like 16 seconds i think yeah recovery time should be like 32 36 seconds so with this you recover really quickly or if you're just outside the boon radius and you're slow and you manage to crawl to where the boon's at, you guys can just basically get up infinitely with this perk. This perk has a lot of potential. There is a fourth boon perk. We're not even going to talk about it. It's useless. Don't worry about it. Just use these three and you'll have a great boon build. For the last perk, guys, you can honestly use whatever you want to use. You can use Dead Hard. You can use Balance Landing. You can use Deliverance. Have fun with this last slot, guys. There's not really a specific perk I think is mandatory for this build. Just whatever you want to use. You know, I'll put balance landing on. Why not? Pick a perk that works for you. The main thing with this build is these three boons. Now, you might be asking, builds, I have trouble finding the totems. I don't know where the totems at. Well, I got you covered. You want to bring the rainbow map, the ultra rare map. This will let you track totems. Also, you can track hatch, objectives, exit gates, basically everything with this map, but you want the, the red one. The green one will not work for this setup. But the red one will because when you walk within what the tracking on this is i think is eight meters but if we use the odd stamp that increases the tracking by 12 meters so within 20 meters of where you are at if you walk next to a totem and turn on your map you will be able to see where that totem's at so as as you're moving through the map naturally you will be able to track objectives and trap totems so you want to bring a rainbow map you want to bring a odd stamp 
and you want to bring the retardant jelly so that way it decreases your map consumption by 20 percent so that way it's easier for you to find your totems so that way you can always have a have a place to boon another option would actually be to use like detective's hunch and then you could actually bring a green map because with detective's hunch in the green map the map will track the spawns of everything because of detective's hunch if that makes sense but normally the green map will not track totems unless you do it with that perk so guys you, you got a little room to play or if you're an advanced player you know where all the totems are at anyways you don't even need to bring the map bring whatever you want but i like bringing the map so i don't have to waste any time looking for totems and this is the boon build guys still a good build it's kind of sad that not a lot of people are booting these days it is definitely fallen from glory but it is far from gone build number 11. hey yo where are my gen jockeys at i know you've been waiting for this guys are you here because you just want to get in get the gens done and get out well guys we've got the gen rush build for you and actually this one's kind of a bonus this is kind of actually like two gen rushing builds so in reality this is like 21 different builds whatever whatever let's hop into it guys the best build for gen rushing in my opinion is this one built to last a staple for gen rushing builds because you're going to need a toolbox and you're going to need to refill that toolbox. Built to last, when you get in the locker, you will refill your empty toolbox. First time you get 99% of the charges back and then each time it's 33% less. So you get 99% back, then 66%, then 33%. 33 plus 66 is 99 plus 99. So basically you get to use your the entirety of your toolbox three times, which is fantastic. The toolbox we're using, the best one we talked about, Commodious Toolbox, 32 charges increases your repair speed by 50 percent you want to bring some wire spools you want to bring some scraps if you don't want to bring scraps you could bring on the socket swivels that's fine too for this build but you want a commodious toolbox that's the important part um and then the rest of the perks guys so this gen rush build is actually based around great skill checks so we're actually bringing fog wise but maybe let me let me talk about these other perks first okay so stake out Every 15 seconds you're within the killer's terror radius, you will get a token, up to four tokens. When you get a skill check, if you get a normal skill check and not a great skill check, Stakeout will convert that to a great skill check for you, consuming one of the tokens, but also give you a bonus 1% to your gen repair progress. Fun fact, Stakeout works for healing too, so you'll get great skill checks on healing. But we're mainly bringing it for the gen. So we could get up to four stacks of stakeout, which is guaranteed four great skill checks on generators. Why is this important? Because we're bringing hyper focus. Hyper focus makes working on generators basically feel like slot machines. So whenever you get a great skill check, you get a token stacks up to six tokens. Each token will increase your chances of getting a skill check by 4%. It will increase the speed of that skill check by 4% and it will increase the bonus progression you get on gens by 30% of its base value per token. So the more great skill checks you get back to back, the more of a bonus you get to your generators. Now, if you fail a great skill check, you lose all your stacks of hyper focus. And that's why I say this makes it feel like Las Vegas. But with stakeout, you can at least take a lot of the guesswork out of it because you're at least guaranteed four great skill checks on a good day especially if you're playing against something like a wesker you're going to be popping out these stakeout tokens like like nobody's business nobody's business so now we have stakeout for the great uh skill checks and if you're on pc it's not too hard to hit great skill checks on pc anyways and then the last perk i said fog wise fog wise every time you hit a great skill check working on gens you see the killer's aura this is just so slept on and it's so good with this build because the whole point of this build is to work on gens with your toolbox fun fact when you're doing gens with a toolbox you get prompted for more great skill checks than you would normally so the toolbox is key for this build because that's going to make it to where we get prompts for more great skill checks so that way we can get more hyper focus stakeout value but also every time we get a great skill check we're seeing the killer's aura assuming they're not a stealth killer so this lets us keep tabs on where the killer's at basically permanently every time we're sitting our ass on a gen we always know where the killer's at and that's a good feeling guys because you can see oh the killer's in chase over there or oh, the killer's heading towards me maybe i should move you just get to basically do gens and it actually actually makes gens a little less boring because you're working on the gens but you're also just seeing what the killer's up to so i really enjoy this setup i enjoy this version of the gen rushing build but let me share with you one more if you don't want to get into the great skill checks we could delete these three perks and instead, I would bring with you Prove Thyself. We already talked about it. For the extra gen speed when you're working with a teammate, I would bring Streetwise. 
which will reduce your item consumption rate by 25% and works for your allies next to you. This will make this toolbox last a ridiculously long time. Guys, I'm not even joking. Like this with Streetwise, it lasts so long, guys. And also, fun fact, you can sabotage hooks with this if the opportunity arises. This build is good for hook sabotaging hooks too. But guys, Streetwise, and then for the last perk, I would do something just like, I don't know, bring like Deja Vu. That way you can break the three gen. So bring Deja Vu, Prove, and Streetwise, and you're gonna have a second version of this badass gen rushing build, or you could bring an exhaustion perk, have some fun, play around a little bit. Uh, but I do wanna say one thing, guys, Streetwise. If you have a buddy or two who wanna use the gen rushing build, all three of you guys should bring a build like this with Streetwise, because Streetwise stacks. So if you have two people with Streetwise and you will do the same gen and use like the offering, where is it? Uh, the Shroud of Binding, you guys will all start together. So you can go knock that gen out in literally like two seconds and you won't even use like any of your freaking toolbox. Like, trust me, I've done this with the buddy and we've had two stacks of Streetwise. So we're using 50% less charges of our toolbox. Oh my God, that it's, it's disgusting. Like. I honestly can't believe more people don't realize that Streetwise actually stacks, but it does. So guys, enjoy it, enjoy it. It's really busted and really fun to use. Woo! Let's hop in to build number 10. All right, we got the Gen Jockeys. Now, where are my altruistic healing players at? Guys, this is the Save Your Build, a healing build for all of you guys to try for the people. This lets you sacrifice one health state to heal another survivor one full health state. So if the survivor is on the ground and you're fully healed, you go injured and then they will also be injured. If they're injured and you're fully healed, then you will be injured and they will be fully healed. This is basically an instant heal, but after you use it, you will be broken for 60 seconds, which means it's going to be 60 seconds before you can heal yourself back to maximum health. Also, this perk will make you become the obsession, so you will get a little extra blood points if you escape as the obsession. Some people like using it for that. But for the people, is going to be a quick instant heal perk. And why are we going to use a perk like this that's going to hurt ourselves? Well, it's for buckle up. Buckle up. Whenever a survivor's in the dying state and you are healing that survivor, you will see the killer's aura. Okay, a little intel, that's cool. But whenever you finish healing the survivor in the dying state to injured, you and that survivor will get endurance for 10 seconds, which means you can take a hit and go to deep wound instead of going down. That is really good, and that's the whole reason to use this with For the People. This is a crazy combo that can save a slugged teammate on the ground like super easily guys like it's not even hard like if a killer downs a survivor and if they leave them there for a second and even sometimes when they're just doing the weapon uh the animation where they're wiping their weapons down if you're close by you could sneak in start healing them for the people them to instantly heal them and then both of you guys will be injured but both of you guys have endurance so it doesn't matter if the killer attacks you or attacks the slug teammate you guys will be able to get out of there. This is a really, really good combo to use, and this can save the day and get some buddies out of matches that, like, otherwise lost games. Like, you can save teammates from situations that would be very, very bad. So this is the combo, but we're also using We'll Make It. Whenever we unhook a survivor, we'll get 100% extra healing speed for 90 seconds. So because of We'll Make It, we can reset our teams really quickly. Like I said, this is the savior build. This is an altruistic build. We're gonna be resetting our teammates with We'll Make It, We'll be keeping them healed up. If somebody gets slugged, we can go in for a really quick save, but also we're using Renewal. This will actually make it to where when we heal our teammates, we're actually getting something in return. So when we finish healing a complete health state, the next time we get unhooked, we'll be broken for 20 seconds, but then after 20 seconds, we will actually heal a full health state for free. So if you unhook a survivor off the hook and then you heal them with, we'll make it, that turns that 16 second heal to an eight second heal. But in return, you get a free heal when you come off the hook. That's 16 seconds somebody else would have had to spend healing you, but you get that for free. That's what, uh, we just save 24 seconds with this combo each time it goes off. That's a lot of time in the DVD world, guys. So we'll make it, we'll get you renewal. But also something that a lot of people don't know about renewal is that if you use for the people, so let's say we're in that situation where one of our teammates is down, we're running up to get the quick save with for the people, if you heal someone with four of the people, you will still get renewal. So then the next time you get hooked and unhooked, 
you get a free heal after 20 seconds, but because you get a heal after with renewal, that means you're fully healed and you can also go back and forth the people someone else. So that's the idea, the savior build, guys. Try it out for yourself. It's a lot of fun. Um, definitely one of my more fun builds, especially when you use for the people to get renewal. It just, it feels good. It's, it's good. It's good. Trust me, guys. Let's hop into build number nine. Hello there, stranger. Did you get your movie ticket to the show? No? Well, here's your ticket. If you're here for this build, it's because you just want to see what's going on all the time. Because you just want to watch DVD like it's a movie. And with these perks, DVD basically feels like a big movie because you can see what's going on basically everywhere. So, guys, the Aura Reading build. Bond lets us see our allies. We've explained this one earlier. Simple perk, but you can always see where your teammates are at within 36 meters. Visionary. I am going to throw Visionary out here. It's pretty much a... It's not the best perk. We could easily use Deja Vu instead and it'd probably be way better. But use Visionary and go to a map like RPD and just try out Visionary. It's actually kind of fun. The weird thing is that Visionary deactivates for 16 seconds after a gen is completed. But this is actually really solid on some maps like Midwich or like Raccoon City Police Station where some of the generators are hidden and hard to find. Vision actually, Visionary is actually decent in those situations for finding those gens. Now you could find them with Deja Vu, but we're, I'm trying to be a little different here and give you guys some different perks to try out and Visionary doesn't really get a lot of love. So I would recommend trying out Visionary. Uh, it's fun guys. It's actually, it's kind of a cute perk, but it's fun. And this build is just about seeing Aura. So we can see all the gens, we can see all our teammates. Windows, we can see all of our vaultable locations and pallets. Even though Windows has been nerfed, I would still recommend it for this build. So now with perk slot number four. So we've got this build where we can see all the pallets, all the vaulting locations. We can see the gens, we can see our teammates. Only thing we're missing is the killer's aura. So I'm using alert every time the killer breaks something. We'll see the killer's aura for five seconds, like we explained earlier. If you don't want to use alert, you could also try out dark sense. Solid choice whenever a gen is finished. When the killer is within 24 meters of you, you will see the killer's aura for 10 seconds. And that will get you five uses out of a game tops if you do all five gens. So, Dark Sense is another option. Or if you want to be really crazy, guys, you can use Open Handed. This increases the aura reading ranges of all your aura reading perks by 16 meters. So if you equip this one, and I, I do use Open Handed here with this build sometimes. Oh my god, you were literally going to see so far away, 36 meters will literally become what 52 meters so you'll see your teammates within 52 meters you'll see all the gens within 52 meters and you'll see literally all the vaulting locations within 52 meters it might be overwhelming but guys you're gonna see so much you basically see everything that's going on on the map and it's actually it's really fun like just do that load in one game and then just just do it for fun like and you'll be amazed at how much better you play when you have all of this knowledge readily available to you like you wouldn't think it makes that big of a difference but it actually does knowing where your teammates at Who's in chase? Where's the gens? Which gens do you need to do to prevent a three gen? Windows, find safety, loop the killer, etc., etc. And what's the killer doing with alert? Guys, fun build. Try it out for yourself. The ultimate aura reading build. Let's move into build number eight. But before I do that, you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Why have you got this far and not smashed the like button yet? And why have you not subscribed yet? I know you, yeah, 80% of you guys out there will fall into this category. Mm, I'm watching you. Smash the like button, support your boy. This video took a lot of work and I would appreciate some love. And let's continue the episode. Ahoy there, matey. You be in the market for some plunder. You be in the fog to loot them their chests. Arr, the plunder pirate build is for you. Uh, yeah, that's my pirate voice. Guys, are you looking for a build just to loot chests? Are you trying to farm items for some weird reason? Are you trying to do a daily quest that makes you loot chests? Or do you just want to loot chests just for fun to see what you get out of the boxes? Guys, the plunder pirate build is the build for you. It all starts with plunder's instinct. This will reveal the aura of all chests within 32 meters of you. That's way you can just go find them. Also slightly increases the chances of finding a rare item in the chest. Cool beans. Ace in the hole. When you get an item from the chest, there's a 100% chance that a very rare or lower add-on will be attached to it, and then a 50% chance of a second uncommon rarity item too. Also, when you escape the trial, you will keep add-ons on your item, okay? So you will actually keep your item and the add-ons, which is kind of a cool little thing about this perk. So we got a perk to find the items. We got a perk to make the items better. We also got appraisal. 
You get three tokens per trial. Whenever you open up a chest, you can rummage through that chest 80% quicker to find another item. So basically the chest that you've opened, you can go through those chests three additional times. You can't do it all in the same test. On the same chest it has to be different chests, but each chest you can rummage. So you can basically get two items from a chest. So you have two chances of getting something good. Um, and then the last perk is built to last because if you get a really good item, like a toolbox or something, and you want to refill the charges, well, you're more than welcome to with built to last because you're bringing it just to be on the safe side. For a build like this, I would recommend bringing a shiny coin for two more additional chests. Arr. Well, let's go on to build number seven. Do you like touching bones? Awkward. Do you hate losing to endgame no ed? Do you like munching totems? Do you have a daily where you need to cleanse a bunch of totems? Or do you just like touching bones? I ask you again. Guys, the totem muncher build, a build based around cleansing totems in Dead by Daylight, an item you don't really have to interact with much, but you can if you'd like. Usually it's seen as a waste of time, but there are moments and perks that can actually make cleansing totems a really good thing to do in the game. So let me explain. Guys, it all starts with Detective's Hunch. So actually, it all starts with the green map. I mentioned this earlier in one of the other builds, guys. So the green map by itself is basically garbage. You get 20 seconds of use, it tracks one gen, and you can attract generators within eight meters of the map. So if you walk by gens, it'll stay tracked on your map. OK, that's cool. But that's literally all this map can do is it can track gens. But if we add on the crystal beads, every time we pull out our map, all other survivors will see the auras of everything revealed. So this will make it to have some coordination. But right now, the map is only revealing gens, but that's going to change. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. So then every time we channel the map, the whole team can see what we're seeing. And then the jelly, which will slow down the burning rate of the map by 20%. So we'll have the map last a little bit longer. So now Detective Hunch, whenever a gen is finished, guys, we will see the aura of all the generators, chests and totems within 64 meters of us for 10 entire seconds. But if we're holding a map, the map will automatically track those objectives. So because you're using Detective's Hunch with the green map, after you do your first gen, you will actually be able to use this to track down your totems, which is the prime reason we're using this. But actually, you can use this to see gens and other stuff, too. So it's actually kind of useful. You can find chests, gens, really good intelligence perk and intelligence map, intelligence combo, whatever you want to call it. It's solid, guys. So now we have Detective Hunch, so we can track down our totems. And now this is where the fun begins. So overzealous, every time we cleanse a totem, this will cause our generator repair speed to increase by 10%. If we manage to cleanse a hex totem or bless a totem, you boon players out there, then this repair speed is actually doubled. So then we'll do gens 20% quicker. This perk will deactivate if we lose a health state though. So when we cleanse a totem, this will allow us to do gens faster and work on the objectives quicker. Now, inner healing. Whenever we cleanse a totem, inner healing will activate. If we go into a locker when inner healing is activated, we will get a free heal after eight seconds. Pretty simple, pretty incredible, actually works really well with overzealous and inner healing because you go up, you cleanse a totem, you get to do your gens quicker. Then you can go work on your gens, knock them out pretty quickly. You take a hit, you go back to a locker, you heal yourself up and then repeat the process. Find another totem. If you don't know, five totems spawn in a map. So you can use this combo potentially up to five times, but also with the build like this, you also know where all the totems are at. So if the killers are running any weird hex perks, you can find them pretty easily. If the killer is running, um, I don't know, Noed, or if you're worried about Noed, you can cleanse all the totems before the end game. A lot of potential here, a lot of utility. So we get gen speed by cleansing totems. We get a free heal by cleansing totems, but we also get a lot of utility with Ellen Ripley's new perk, Lucky Star. Whenever we hide in a locker, the perk will activate. This makes a lot of sense because with inner healing, we'll be going into lockers a lot. So when we go into the locker, we won't leave any pools of blood and we won't make any grunts of pain for 10 seconds. So this actually works really well with inner healing because when you go into a locker, you're technically still making a little bit of noise from grunts of pains. Um, eight seconds isn't a long time though. Usually you will not get found in the eight seconds. But this basically just makes it completely safe because you won't be making any noise at all. And then you stop leaving pools of blood. So 
you could do weird things with this perk. Like if you wanted to just pop into locker real quick and then pop out just so you're not making grunts of pain or leaving blood and then run away. That might be something you could do. You'd still be leaving scratch marks. So I don't know if that would really work out for you, but it's an option. Also, whenever you leave the locker, you will see the aura of all other survivors for 10 seconds and the closest generator as well. That's a lot of utility. This perk kind of makes your inner healing safe. It helps you find a gen that's close by so you can get to work after you heal up. It shows you where your teammates are at. If you need to find a teammate for some reason to heal them, to see where the chase is at, to see um, if you need to get a heal because you don't have any totems to cleanse, that probably shouldn't happen. But in case it does, you can use Lucky Star, hop into Locker, and then you get a lot of free intel for basically nothing. Uh, it's really good, guys. I've had games where I just like spam into run into locker real quick and then leave real quick just so I can see the auras of my teammates. This is a really fun, solid perk to use, and it fits so well with this build. Like all of this, this build, I've had a lot of good builds on this episode, but everything here fits like bread and butter. Lucky Star combos with inner healing, inner healing combos with overzealous. All of this combos with Detective's Hunch because it's showing us the totems, which combos with the map etc etc we're never having issues finding anything at all on the map whatever we want to find we can find so this is like a totem cleansing but also you just you just know where everything's on the map if for some reason you need to go find a chest for like a med kit or something you could do that like fun build solid build the totem muncher build give it a try you will not regret it build number six are you a lazy bum just trying to sleep on the job do you want to just lay on the floor do you want to be an absolute slug are you trying to get some ridiculously funny power struggle stuns off on the killer and that's really your only objective you don't really care about winning the game you just want to have a little fun well guys the slug lord build is the build for you because i told you i have a build for every single situation and that even includes being slugged and left on the ground guys the slug me slug lord build a build based around being left on the ground to get value out of your perks it all starts with flip flop when you're in the dying state 50 percent of your recovery progression while you're on the ground will be converted to wiggle progression to a maximum of 50% because it can't go higher than that because after that you would just get up. So this lets it be to where when you're on the ground recovering, the more progress you get on your recovery, the more of a chance you will have to wiggle out from when the killer picks you up. Cool beans. Well, why we need flip flop is for power struggle. Power struggle. Whenever we are in the dying state, we will see the aura of pallets. That's the part's not relevant for us. The main part is when we're being carried by the killer, after we have reached 15% wiggle progression, we can use Power Struggle to drop a pallet that's next to the killer and stun the killer. And then the killer will then drop us and we will be free to leave. So why we need this is because remember, flip flop converts 50% of your recovery progression to wiggle progression. So if you can recover at least 30% by the time the killer picks you up, you will have power struggle. And if you go down next to a pallet, you will be able to immediately stun that killer. And usually this will be able to happen because if you go down at a pallet, the killer will usually not pick you up right away. They'll usually explore a little bit to make sure there's not another survivor around. And hopefully you should be able to get your charges because we do have Unbreakable, which increases our dying state recovery speed by 35%. Also lets us recover once from the dying state per trial. So worst case scenario, we don't get picked up we can pick ourselves up anyways, no problem, no problem. And the last perk I am using with this is tenacity. Kind of reasons I said earlier with the no mither build. Let's say we go down, we get slugged, um, but we're close to pallet, but we're not quite there. This can sometimes make the difference between us making it to a pallet versus not making it to pallet. Also, it lets us recover and crawl at the same time and makes us a little bit harder to find while we're slugged on the ground as it reduces our grunts of pain. I like tenacity here. Um, usually if the killer knocks you down, they will typically pick you up right away. But in those moments where they don't, this lets you navigate a little bit better. So you can actually get to a pallet in a situation where the pallet's just, just out of reach. Cause sometimes you do go down just a few seconds before you get to the pallet. This can make the difference between you making it to the pallet versus not making it to the pallet. Another solid option for a build like this would actually be, actually I got like two more options here. If you wanted to, not be so focused on laying on the ground and want it to be more of like a wiggle out build. You could try out boil over. Boil over is a really good perk. Uh, works pretty well with flip flop and power struggle. Uh, where's boil over? Right there. Boil over 
If the killer drops from a elevated height, you'll get 33% extra wiggle progression. Also, the killer will have the, their ability to see the hooks will be obstructed. So all hooks within 16 meters, they won't be able to be able to see. And your wiggling against the killer while he's carrying you is increased by 80%, which can sometimes cause them to mess up and get snagged by you the time you need to wiggle out. So boil over would be fun to use instead of tenacity. Also, um, plot twist, guys. Plot twist, but don't be silly with it. Plot twist, when you're injured, you can actually use plot twist to go straight into the dying state. And then you can intentionally put yourself into the dying state and then recover with unbreakable speed and then just maybe 99 your health and just like chill there to try and bait the killer into getting a power struggle play on you. Um, or you could just stand up really quick and then pout on him and then run away with your haste from plot twist. That's another fun thing to do. Um, this build is just all for fun and trolling. Sometimes it can come in clutch, but in general, it's, it's just a fun build, guys. Like, give it a go. Try it out for yourself. The Slug Lord build. The build that's all about getting slugged. So now, guys, we are making it finally to the last five builds. Woo! Can you feel it, guys? Oh, let's go. Build number five. Also, like and subs, dudes. Okay? All right, let's go. Have you been watching this video the entire time, just waiting for me to get to one of DVD's meta builds? Do you just want to use four really strong perts and hop into a trial and hope for the best? Well, guys, I have got the build for you. This is one of DVD's meta builds, the builds, Sprint Burst. We've talked about it before. Great exhaustion perk, even great when you 99 it. Um, awesome exhaustion perk, but you don't have to use just Sprint Burst. You can use Sprint Burst, you can use Life. That's a very good alternative. Any exhaustion perk here to help you in chase will do just nicely. Unbreakable. Very strong perk when it works. Doesn't always work. A lot of times this killer slugs you, you're stuck on the ground, you get picked up, you get thrown on a hook. But just by having this perk, you open up the door to save yourself and your teams from some crazy unwinnable situations. Just because you have the ability to recover yourself from the dying state by yourself once per trial and you also recover 35 percent quicker which can help with your teammates picking you up if you get left slugged on the ground just the fact that this perk exists means killers cannot risk leaving t people slugged for too long because they're on the back of their mind they'll always be worried about what if this player uses unbreakable this perk is very clutch when it does work it doesn't always work but it's always a solid perk to just have in your loadout if you're just running three perks and you're not sure what the fourth slot should be unbreakable is usually a pretty safe bet just because of what it can do for you and your team and sometimes you're down next to a pallet you can revive yourself get to like 99 percent next to the pallet usually the killer might play if they're playing a little bit of safe and they don't want to pick you up because they're worried about a pallet stun that's fine and then when they come back to pick you up after chasing your teammates away you can heal up then drop the pallet on them and then run off and carry go about your merry way adrenaline guys solid perk not, not much to say here. Finish the last gen, heal a full health state, and run 150% quicker for five seconds. Again, another clutch perk. Unbreakable is a clutch perk. Adrenaline is a clutch perk. There are so many times when that last gen pops and then the killer's pressure just gets dropped. Like one, two, three. Even if there's like four teammates running adrenaline, that's just absolutely insane because everybody's going to heal up. Everybody's going to run really fast. If you're in the dying state, you'll go into the injured state. If you're injured, you'll go to fully healed. If you're on the hook and then the last gen pops when your team out of hooks you, you will still get fully healed with adrenaline. Great perk if you make it to the end game. Definitely not bad to throw in your load. And the best part is that you don't really have to do anything crazy to get value out of these perks. Like just playing the game, you'll be in situations where these perks will become valuable for you. And then the last perk is off the record, guys. The anti-tunnel perk of choice whenever you're unhooked. For 80 seconds, you will not show your ore to the killer. So they will have a hard time finding you with barbecue and chili or any other ore reading perks. So this discourages them from tunneling you but also for 80 seconds or excuse me 80 seconds you won't call that you won't have any grunts of pains from your injuries so you're gonna be quieter your aura won't be shown to the killer but you'll also have endurance assuming you don't touch a gen or do an action to get rid of your endurance for 80 seconds you can take a free additional hit so this is the anti-tunneling perk of choice it does deactivate in the end game but usually that's not an issue because you do have adrenaline so all in all a very solid perk you just want to hop into a game and you want to have your best chances of like escaping just from strong individual perks this is not a build to go for I would recommend bringing a med kit with a gel dressing and bandages with you so that way you get two extra self heals on top of this and this should let you have some pretty standard games. The downsides, you don't really have too much to help your teammates but you do have a lot to make sure you're not the weakest link on the team. 
without further ado guys let's go into build number four Build number four is actually a second meta build, guys. I had to put two on here because there's multiple meta builds right now. This one is a for the people buckle up made for this kind of hybrid build. We've discussed these perks and different builds separately, but right now we have made for this. Whenever we're injured, we run 3% quicker. We've discussed it. You finish healing somebody, you'll get endurance for 10 seconds. Uh, resilience, you do everything 9% quicker when you are injured. So these are great perks to help you in chase. These are great perks when you're injured. This helps you vault even quicker. But why we're using these two perks is because we're running for the people and buckle up. The combo I talked about earlier, for the people, lets you instantly heal a teammate, but then you're broken for 60 seconds, which means you're injured and you can't heal up. So since you're gonna be broken for 60 seconds after using for the people, it makes sense to have two good perks to help you out in chase and just to help you do the objectives until you can heal up. And then buckle up to allow you to have those quick, amazing insta saves at the end game. Whenever you start healing a teammate that's slugged, You'll, you'll both see the killer's aura, but when you finish healing them, whether you use for the people or just heal them naturally, you guys will both get endurance for 10 whole seconds. So the cool thing about this is actually you've got two endurance perks. It's not really necessary, but it just happens to be, it happens to just fit this way. So you go up to a patient, a patient, not a patient, I'm not nursing right now. You go up to a player who's slugged. You, for the people them, the buckle up. You both get endurance for 10 seconds, which means either one of you can take a hit. That lets you get some clutch saves in the end game, or actually just any time in the game. But also, you don't care that you're injured because you have resilience and you have made for this. Bring a med kit, same setup, gel dressing and bandages, so that way you have two free self heals. So that way you can actually 99% your health. Um, if you want to still get resilience and made for this value, and if the killer comes for you, you can just top yourself off. Or if you want to make sure you're ready for a for the people save, you can top yourself off with your med kit. All in all, great, well-rounded build, guys. You got a little bit here to help with the chase, but also a little bit here to get some clutch saves on your teammates. And then even made for this, guys, when you heal injured teammates, you'll get endurance for 10 seconds. So even if you're just healing someone from injured to fully healthy, you'll still get endurance if you're injured with made for this. But then when you're healing your dying teammates, you'll also get endurance because of buckle up. So guys, strong, strong meta build. Use this one, use the other one. And they're both fun and they're both a good time. And you're pretty much going to get some good escapes with either one of them. Let's hop into build number three. Are you newish to the game and don't know how to be a good teammate for your teammate? Is the only thing you really know how to do is to unhook and save your teammates and that's what you do to feel like a good part of the team? Or are you doing a unhooking challenge? Or do you just like playing defense? Or do you just like getting your teammates off the hook because it's very painful to watch them there hanging? Guys, the unhooking build is the build for you. It's based around four unhooking perks. We'll make it. Whenever you unhook a survivor, you will get a 100% extra healing speed for 90 seconds, which means you heal in 8 seconds instead of the 16 seconds. Really quick heals coming off the hooks. Borrowed time. Whenever you unhook a teammate, they will keep their endurance for 10 additional seconds, and they'll keep their movement speed for 10 additional seconds. So guys, wherever you're unhooking, they're not going to get tunnel because they'll have 20 seconds of endurance, 20 seconds of speed, and this is a good staple in this build because we want to be unhooking our teammates so we get perk value, but we sometimes might be put into situations where we have to just do a crazy unhook just to get one of our perks to activate, which I'll talk about here in a second. Third perk, Guardian, guys. Underrated, not a lot of people use it, but it's actually a pretty fun perk. Whenever you unhook a survivor, they won't leave any scratch marks or pools of blood, and they'll get a 7% haste status effect for 8 seconds. So not only do they have 20 seconds of speed and endurance, but for the first eight seconds of it, they will have extra haste and they won't leave any blood. So it'll be a little difficult for, oh, they won't leave any scratch marks or blood. So it'll actually be a little difficult for the killer to track and tunnel them straight off the hook if they are trying to do so. But also whenever you unhook a survivor, you'll see the killer's aura for eight seconds. What's fun about this is like when you unhook a teammate, you can see where the killer's at. So you can see if the killer's coming back to the hook or not. And if they're not eight seconds, remember we heal in eight seconds, which will make it. We can just start healing right out the hook, and this makes it to where you're for sure safe to heal out the hook, because if the killer's coming back, you guys can just run off. If the killer's not coming back, you can already tell, because you can see the killer's aura with Guardian. So three unhooking perks, and then the last one is Deliverance. So guys, I cannot stress this enough. With this build, you want to play extra, extra safe, because if you get hooked first, it's going to feel incredibly bad. But Deliverance is an insanely strong survivor perk. Whenever you safely unhook one survivor, you will have a 100% chance to escape your first hook. Only the first hook, because you can only jump off the first hook. The second hook, you go into your skill checks. But this is great. There are so many situations where jumping off the hook just ruins the killer's pressure. One of my favorite ones is if you manage to not get hooked until the end game, and the killer's camping the last hook, you could actually go swap hooks with the survivor that's on the hook. You can go up, 
take your hit, and then while the killer's in his animation, do the unhook action. You unhook them, they have Guardian, they have Borrowed Time, they're gonna for sure get out, and then the killer's just gonna settle for you, so then the killer will grab you and throw you on the hook, but you have Deliverance, so then you can just jump out off the hook, take your Endurance hit, and hopefully make it out of the exit gate in time, just depending on where the exit gate spawns, but a lot of times, those endgame scenarios, the last survivor ends up being hooked pretty close to an exit gate. So guys, Deliverance, insanely good perk, and it makes this build a lot of fun. And what I was saying is that sometimes you will go for these the unsafe rescues because you want to get your deliverance but because you have borrowed time and guardian it's really not an issue a lot of times survivors will unhook another survivor in front of the killer and then that survivor gets tunneled don't be that kind of survivor but you can be with this build because you're giving them borrowed time and guardian so odds are they should be able to make some decent escape from the killer and you will get your deliverance to activate because if they actually go down right away and it's not a safe hook, you won't actually get deliverance. But guys, the unhooking build, use it for all of your unhooking needs. And let's hop into build number two. Are you asking yourself, what is the secret to massive success in Dead by Daylight? What is the key to massive success in Dead by Daylight? Do you want a build that gives you intelligence, aura reading capabilities, and a very good chance to escape at the end through the hatch? Guys, this build is literally the key to success in Dead by Daylight, and it's a key-based item build. We're using the Ultra Rare Skeleton Key. It has to be the Ultra Rare Skeleton Key, nothing else. 30 seconds of use, you can consume this key to open up the hatch. More on that later. Add-ons, Blood Amber. Let's you see the killer's aura within 32 meters of you. Increases our consumption of the key by 100%. So we will have 15 seconds of charge instead of 30 seconds, but that's fine because we're getting basically map packs and basically a lot of info to see where the killer's at at all times. Gold token reveals the aura of survivors within 48 meters of us. So whenever we channel our key, we have an item that lets us see where the killer's at and lets us see where our teammates are at. You can use this setup to basically be off the grid and just avoid the killer at all costs. You can just use this aura reading ability, assuming it's not a stealth killer, and you can just play it safe. Do gens, stay away from the killer. If you need to heal your teammate or you need to find a teammate to heal you, use your gold token so that way you can see the auras of your teammates. Solid setup for the key to actually just avoid the killer. And also, you know where everybody's at and what everybody's doing. So great for intelligence, but it gets even better. We're bringing Built to Last. Built to Last is optional here. You don't have to use it, but it is really nice to have because you can just refill the charges on your key, especially if you're spamming your key a lot or if you're in chase and you're using your 15 seconds to just get permavision on the killer to mind game them out. Then bring Built to Last with you. But if you want, you could also bring an exhaustion perk for this perk slot. That wouldn't be the end of the world, but I like build to last here because I like refilling my key charges and using maximizing my aura reading potential of this build. Open handed, because we have so much aura reading going on, we're using open handed. Increases the aura reading ranges of everything by 16 meters, guys. So instead of 32 meters, we're at what? 48 meters instead of 48 meters here. We're at like 56 meters, 66 meters. Oh my God, insane. Basically, you can always see where your team's at. And if case, that wasn't enough. We're using it with Kindred, guys. Kindred and open-handed, sick, sick combo. And that's why I say here, you could actually probably use an exhaustion perk and be okay. Because with these two perks, you're getting a lot of intelligence all the time. Kindred, whenever somebody's hooked, the killer's aura within the hook will be revealed up to 16 meters because of open-handed. You can see the killer within 32 meters of the hook. Absolutely freaking insane. So you're always gonna know what the killer's doing. And it also shows you where all your buddies are at it all, all the time. So literally, again, you can figure out who needs to go for the rescue. Do you need to go for the rescue? Do they need to go for the rescue? It doesn't really matter. You'll know and you'll really help unorganized teams be more organized with Kindred because when you're on the hook, they also see the killer's aura and they will also see where all the other survivors are at too. And then the last perk that makes this build just so sweet is because you have so much aura reading intelligence you will be able to avoid the killer a lot better than some of the other survivors. So there's a lot of times where either, where you'll be the last one standing with this build. Like I'm not saying you need to play selfish. I'm not saying you need to not help your teammates, but just because we have so much intel and so many ways to just like avoid the killer because we always know what the killer's doing, left behind becomes very clutch because on those situations where we're the last survivor alive, we will see the hatch within 32 meters. So that's either if all the survivors left the exit gates, you'll see the hatch, or if everybody else is dead, you'll see the hatch. But with open hand, guys, that is a 48, 58 meter range of you seeing the hatch, which means you can just beeline it straight to the hatch. But the best part, guys, is you can even play it safe. You can run straight to the hatch, jump in the hatch, but you don't even have to jump in the hatch. You can just see where the hatch is at, 
you can use your key, channel the aura, see where the killer's at, and just move really slowly. And if the killer closes the hatch, it doesn't matter, because then you can just use the key to open the hatch and escape. Beautiful, beautiful build, guys. Love this freaking build. It's incredible, and it's so satisfying to actually use a key to open the hatch, because no killer ever expects it. When you do it, they're always just dumbfounded. Have your laughs. The key to success in Dead by Daylight is this build. Feel free to sub out Built to Last if you want to use Deja Vu or an Exhaustion perk, but guys, this build, a lot of fun to use, especially when it works. Now, let's go on to the final build, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, you made it to the end of the video. I love you so much. For the last build, I am sharing with you my go-to build, a balanced build. If you're here and you want a build to give you a really good chance of success in every single one of your games, something that's just well-rounded, something that helps you, that helps the team, and gives you a lot of opportunities for escapes, this is the build for you guys. The build is starting with the medkit, actually. Bring a medkit bring bandages, and bring either the scriptic agent to give you five seconds of endurance, but consume your medkit on use, or bring a syringe for a second heal. Both of these are really good. I do like the syringe. Sometimes I like the bottle time, uh, but this is good because this medkit will give you one free heal. It's going to be a faster heal because we're using botany, which increases our healing speed by 50%. Remember, this reduces our item efficiency by 20%. So because of that, we will actually still have a little bit of charges left over because we're using bandages which means we can get one really fast heal self heal or heal on a teammate either way and then we get a second free heal with a syringe or a second ability to use endurance with a skeptic agent both are great here exhaustion perk we're using sprint burst great exhaustion perk just use it guys we've explained it a ton of times in this video run faster 99 or Shrimp Burst, just a probably the best exhaustion perk to be using right now. If you want, you can use Life 2, doesn't matter. Like I said, use the exhaustion perks that work for you guys. Prove thy freaking self to help you do gems quicker with your teammates. 10% increased speed bonus when you're working on gems with teammates. Very good well-rounded build because we got some exhaustion perk for Chase. We've got a gen perk to help us with gems. Instead of Prove, if you don't want to use Prove, you can also use Deja Vu here. Completely acceptable. And the last two perks are the, the creme brulee of this build, Botany, for that increased healing speed of 50% all the time. This lets us reset our, reset our teammates really quickly. This lets us heal ourselves pretty quickly. It's not as good as Mo Make It, but the trade-off is that we have this all the time, and it feels really damn good to always be healing 50% quicker. But my favorite thing about Botany is actually using it with no one left behind. Nobody uses this perk. Everybody sleeps on this perk. But this perk is so much fun. Whenever you get to the end game, it activates. And it makes you feel like you are on crack. It makes you feel like a Super Saiyan survivor. A lot of things this perk does. One, 100% extra blood points for healing and unhooking survivors, which makes this basically one of the only perks that gives you extra blood points. Fun fact, since Prove got nerfed. Two, guys, this perk does four things, by the way. 50% extra action speed when you heal and unhook other survivors. Remember, we have 50% healing speed already from Botany. Now it's cracked up to 100, so in the end game after the last gen pops, we do basically have base kit will make it, because we'll be healing other survivors 100% quicker, and also we heal them 50% quicker. Also, the survivor we unhook will have a 7% movement bonus for 10 seconds, so they will have a good chance of getting away from the killer and escaping the trial. And then the last and best part of this perk is that it reveals the aura of all other survivors to you permanently. So it's like bond on crack. So in the end game, you will see where everybody's at. You can find your teammates. You can reset them and heal them because we're healing 100% quicker. If one of your teammates in chase, you can go run and see exactly where the chase is at. And you can body block, take a hit for that survivor to get him out of the trial. This just opens up the door for so many things. And even like saving your sprint burst, if the killer's can't be in the hook, you can sprint burst up to the hook really quickly and get a cheeky unhook. And a lot of times that 50% extra speed is enough to where you won't even actually have to swap a hook state. You might take one M1, but you'll also be able to run away and loop a little bit after getting the unhook. Or whoever you unhook can body block for you since they'll have the 7% movement bonus anyways, so they can play defense, play extra safe. But guys, this is my probably my favorite build that I always default back to for the last couple months in Dead by Daylight. Like, try it out for yourself. Like, this is just a great, well-rounded build that gives you a little bit of everything. It's balanced, it feels good, I have a lot of options. I don't have to worry about finding heals because I get two heals with my med kit and my syringe, but I can also heal my teammates really quickly so they can go back to being productive and working on gens. Just great build, great build, great build. I cannot hype it up enough, but guys, before I close out this video, I've got one extra bonus build for you. Because you made it to the end of this video, 
We've got one extra bonus build, but I've got one question for you first. Guys, if you haven't smashed the like button already, smash the like button because I just gave you 20 plus builds. Honestly, after this next one, 21, but some of these builds, I actually talked about two different builds. So guys, I gave you just like 22, 23 builds right now. So the least you could do to help your boy out is smash the like button for the algorithm and subscribe to the channel and throw some love in the comment section so we can just make this video go viral. Everybody in the DVD community deserves to watch this video. And that's it, guys. Support your boy, DVD Builds. Let's go in to my final bonus build for you guys, just because I love y'all. All right, guys, and the final build is for those of you who just really, really don't want to be tunneled, or for those of you who actually do want to be tunneled just to goof off and have a good time when facing off the killer, this build is the Tunnel Me Bro build, or the Don't Tunnel Me build, because you're tired of getting tunneled. The build, guys, dead hard, decisive strike off the record and flash bang. Let's talk a little bit about the build, guys. Also, fun fact, if you're playing on PC or Steam and you actually want to maximize value out of this build, change your name to something ridiculous like Tunnel Me Bro or Tunnel Me or Bet You Can't Tunnel Me. A lot of killers will actually probably bite and then just proceed to try and tunnel you out. So anyways, if you want to be ballsy, feel free to do that. If not, I understand. But the build, guys, Dead Hard. After you get unhooked, you will be able to use Dead Hard. After you use Dead Hard, you can only activate it when you're injured. You'll have 0.5 seconds of endurance. Don't think I need to explain this. Most people know what Dead Heart is, but this lets you tank an additional hit after you get unhooked. We're using Decisive Strike. When we get unhooked for 60 seconds, if the killer picks us up or pulls us out of a locker, we'll have a difficult skill check, and if we get it, we will stun the killer for 3 seconds, and then the killer will drop us. This perk becomes disabled, then we become the obsession, whatever, whatever. Here, moving on, off the record, when we're unhooked, we'll have 80 seconds of endurance, like we talked about earlier. Our aura won't be revealed to the killer, our grunts of pains will be reduced 100%, and we'll have the endurance status effect. And then, flashbang, when we do half of a gen, 50%, we'll get a free flashbang. We can drop this item at any time to stun or blind the killer, or maybe get some kind of saves with the flashbang. But the idea with this build, guys, every time we get unhooked, we've got basically double protection because of off the record and decisive strike. So if the killer wants to tunnel you, You've got 80 seconds to take a hit with off the record and if they hit you pretty quickly coming off the hook and you burn through your off the record charge you still have decisive strike if you go down within 60 seconds so then if the killer continues to tunnel you or if you're actually provoking them to keep chasing you then you can keep running away get down again killer picks you up you hit your decisive strike which will drop you again and then you'll be back in the injured state which means you can still use your dead hard to take another hit but what I like to do with this build is you take the off the record hit, you get down, you take the decisive strike hit. If you've got your flashbang, then once you decide to strike the killer, just drop the flashbang on them. Drop the flashbang on them. Once their stun ends, they're going to get blinded. They'll have difficulty tracking you. You'll be able to make some distance. Or if you drop a pallet and they're still chasing you, you can drop the flashbang as soon as they do the break animation for the pallet. So that way you can blind them and hopefully make a little distance. Just a fun little way to harass the killer and try to deter them from tunneling you. But, like I said, off the record hit, decisive strike hit, you get dropped, you drop a flashbang on them. Or, option two is you can use your med kit with the syringe add-on and the scriptic agent, so that way you'll have 5 seconds of endurance and 16 seconds you'll heal a health state. You can use this syringe after you stun the killer to give yourself endurance, take the hit, and then run off. And then if you can stall a little bit more time and chase... Depending on when you took your endurance hit, remember this takes 16 seconds to activate, but if you can stall out that 16 seconds, you'll actually heal out of your deep wound back into your injured state, which means you can still use dead hard. This combo, I used to call it the god combo, I used to do it a lot back when this had the 8 seconds of bottled time. It can still work now, it can still work just fine, and when it does work, it's a great time, because remember, you'll take that endurance hit, you'll run off, you'll get some distance, it's not that hard to extend the chase for another 12, 10 seconds. Just really depends on your looping skills. But if you are able to extend the chase long enough for the syringe to heal you, you'll still have your dead heart. And then, guys, if you go off the record, the size of strike, into either a flashbang or healing yourself with a med kit, another endurance hit, and then a dead heart hit after all of that, guys, that's one, two, three, four levels of protection. Like, the killer's gonna be so freaking angry if you manage to pull that combo off. And if you haven't checked it out, guys, check out the God Combo clip on my YouTube. Just Google uh, DVD Bill's God Combo. I pulled this off on a couple killers, and it is, it's just so damn hilarious when it happens. But guys, this is a build to prevent you from getting tunneled, or if you want the killer to tunnel you just to mess around with the killer, please use this build. 
But without further ado, guys, I am finally ending this episode now. My god, top 20 best survivor builds, 20 plus builds, every build, every playstyle. My goodness, guys, smash the like button. I love you guys. Have an amazing day. And do not forget to smile. I will see you guys on the next one. I'm out. Oh, also, don't forget to check out Sammy Stark if you want to follow my Thailand adventures. Love you. Bye.